Okay, today what we're going to be looking at is uh, the corn keyboard and how I've actually made it Bluetooth. Um, I'm just going to show you that it actually is work wirelessly and uh, just kind of, kind of show you. I've got that, that, and I'll just switch that down a little bit so you actually see me type on it and uh, go to the like QMP configurator to test the keyboard. Um, let me just kind of like show you here. So and actually you can actually see very clearly that uh, I can actually type from both sides. It's RGB, it's wireless, uh, and it does answer very well. Okay, so how did I do this? Um, there's actually a few tricks that I had to do. Now, one of the things that I did do is actually I did add, um, uh, you can actually see we need to add a battery to make it Bluetooth uh, for one and the battery well the only one that I had available were these little coin cells these are special ones they're rechargeable coin cells so I had to like set up a little well, carrier for it so if I just gonna like turn the keyboard off so that I can go and pull things off completely so this if you remember the corn uses the a, a um, a pro micro now with the pro micro usually it's always connected uh, like by with a wire so there's no power to worry about it but we need to put a battery on here and the only battery I had available was essentially these coin cells so I kind of made a little board for the coin cell uh, that is right here and being a little bit wider than the width of the Pro Micro, I had to do a little bit of magic. So you can see here, oops, see here, it's only connected through the tops here. Then this is what I call the, the Blue Micro 840. And I, let me just find one if I've got one here available. Yeah, I got one here that's uh, essentially was a failed one. Uh, and let me just get that uh, QMK thing off here, so the camera only. So this is essentially the the Blue Micro 840. Um, it's uh, pretty much the same factor as the Blue Micro. It's a little bit wider, but not by much. Uh, and it's the same length uh, as you can see uh, right here. But um, so essentially, I've got a, a, a 840 an RF52 840 module here. This one I've got failed because for some reason I've got a problem with it. Uh, but um, essentially, it gets installed, uh, and I usually like to have them on sockets. So let me uh, can like pull it off right from here, and then just want to. And with tweezers, it's easy to pull things relatively perpendicularly. There we go. So you can see I've got these little diode legs that can go into the sockets. So by installing regular sockets, I can easily just like swap them for pro, for regular Pro Macros, adding the. Uh, the OLED and the TRS and the reset pins, but I just said, okay, let's just bring the keyboard, just have the um, uh, the OLED, the, the 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 socket, and I can actually use one of these pro micro, these uh, blue micros. And the blue micro is actually pretty small now because of the board itself for the the battery is a little bit longer. I had to kind of like go and extend over the area where the OLED would connect in, so. Um, but um, then I'm just gonna kind of plug it back in in here. Gotta make sure that I line up the right pins in the right places. Yeah, so it's all good. And if I turn it back on, it goes uh, right on. Now, one of the special thing that I had to do, um, because the Blue Micro can actually go to sleep. I've got the firmware set up to go to sleep. However, these LEDs, they consume, even when the Blue Micro goes to sleep, you, there's no way to get all these to go to sleep, to, to the LEDs to go to sleep, uh, to complete power them off. So what I've done, and if you look very carefully, I've added a little switch right here, and I can actually turn it off uh, with that little slide switch there. 
And now if I go and turn these guys on and off, uh, you can actually see it's not it's not powering on. But if I turn it on again right here, uh, you'll see it powers on. So so if I want to have all the eye candy, I can turn it on. But if I just want to leave it off, I can easily uh, have a full corn without the RGB because I can turn it off and it actually goes to sleep uh, very well. Uh, I haven't measured how long these coin cell batteries, rechargeable coin cell batteries last, but hopefully they're going to last uh, much longer than um, when they go to sleep. Uh, as I mentioned, it's still consume and overnight uh, these coin cells were completely drained. Uh, that's because the uh, the LED still kind of goes through the uh, the battery. But if with the switch off, I haven't measured how long it's going to last, but hopefully it'll last a few days before I need to recharge uh, these up. Uh, the rechargeable ones don't can't, don't have a high high, high capacity as the the regular uh, CR twenty thirty two. They're the exact same four factor. So the CR twenty thirty two, they're like. 200 or something milliamp hours whereas these rechargeable ones are like under a hundred I don't remember the number but uh, so so how did I actually do and add the switch underneath um, and let me actually can I go uh, and show you uh, on the circuit board here and let me go right here uh, and uh, go into program here so this is the uh, the corn key uh, the corn uh, PCB that I've actually been using here uh, but if you actually look carefully uh, all those VCC that is this line here goes from the two options of VCC or the two options of the uh, uh, the Pro Micro but then that line is one common line that goes into all the to power on all the LEDs uh, so all that I had to do was essentially cut this line here uh, and add a switch between well this line here and then the uh, the pad that I've got for the VCC right here so let's go and have a look um, on uh, what I did uh, on here um, I'm trying to remember which one I think it's this one that's the easier to see so let me just go flip back to the camera uh, and go and uh, see what I've done on here so is this the size for this one? Yep. So let me open it up with these five screws there and show you what I've done. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you can actually see right here. So now I'll zoom in on here just to show you. Uh, there it is. So what I've done, and hopefully the camera won't put too much in the focus here. So you can actually see right here, I've actually filed off that VCC line that was connecting. And I've added this little board here that I've had to like add little notches to pass it around where the socket kind of goes through. Uh, and I've connected that into a little board switch. Then this is my slide switch. Then over to my VCC line right there. So I can like right now it's off. But then if I slide it over to the other side. It's going to make that connection. Uh, and then get my LED on. So this is what the, the magic that I had to do. Uh, or the, the hack that I had to do to get my... Um, uh, the connection over a little switch uh, to get my uh, my RGB LED on or off. So if I turn this guy on right here, uh, now if I go like this, you'll see uh, it actually ons and off. But then if I just do this, it completely leaves them off. So that's what I had to do uh, uh, to my Bluetooth keyboard to make it. Uh, to disconnect my, uh, let me just zoom back out here. So that's what I had to do to my corn keyboard 
to be able to disconnect the RGB, the power to the RGB LEDs and to reconnect it is to add this little guy. Uh, and what this looks like, um, it's essentially um, just a simple um, surface mount switch, slide switch, uh, and these are little boards that you just snap off and then uh, you just trim to make them fit. And, and that's it. Um, so that's uh, what I had to do to do the magic of my corn keyboard uh, to make it uh, Bluetooth. And uh, it was pretty simple. Okay, thanks. Bye.